AMD's tech was used to create way to FX's Oscar-winning short War is over, CEO Lisa Su talks I. AMD's CEO, Lisa Su, was live at SXSW and talked a lot about I plus its prospects on where the tech is now and where it is headed in the coming years. AMD CEO talks about how they're powering the I ecosystem, IPCs kicking off this year a major driver force in the future. There's no doubt that all major chip makers, AMD, Intel, Nvidia, Apple, etc., are all on board the iHype train. The emerging IPC segment is set to be a kickstarter for the future of I and while it holds big potential for the coming years, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done within the software side to make next-gen capabilities and enhanced personal assistance available to users. Dr. Lisa Su states that as the technology progresses and software gets better, the rate of adoption of IPCs is going to increase. SXSW I like to see everyone have an IPC, you know that's not going to happen this year but there's this whole opportunity over it will start this year, over next couple of years you will see it throughout product portfolios. I like to see everyone have access to all the knowledge that you can get from I that comes from making our chips more capable over time and deeper partnerships. CNBC People really have a lot of personal data and the way you want to use your PC is that it is actually a personal productivity tool so what I see is that we are at the beginning of the era where we can make much much more capable personal assistance in the PC form factor, as the technology gets better. I am absolutely sure that everyone's going to want an IPC. Lisa Su, AMD CEO Talking about the use of I and how the first thing to pop up in everyone's mind is that I will be replacing people in the future, AMD's CEO states that's not how they believe I will evolve in the future. I and creators of all kinds will coexist and the great thing about I is that it will be more of a personal assistant that's available to you 24-7 making you do work that took hours and just a couple of minutes. It is mentioned that companies that leverage I will be the ones to really advance and push forward versus those that don't. Even as of right now, companies like AMD and Nvidia are using I to make, design, and research next generation chips. One of the things that I like to say is that people are worried about I that it's going to replace jobs and stuff like that, that's not the way I think about it. I think that companies that learn to leverage I are going to win over companies that are not leveraging I so at AMD, we are going to be at the bleeding edge. We are using I through every aspect of our business, we are using it to design chips, we are using it to design faster chips, make them more reliable, make better software, make sure that it's really a productivity tool, and my goal, like I am telling my engineering team. I like to increase the number of products we can get out each year with the use of I. I is not perfect, we are all learning along the way. I would say that I am personally learning so every day, I am learning new things about what the technology can do and how do we need to shape our entire ecosystem and our work in our next generation products as well so that's what makes it fun. AMD also touched on its open source nature and stated that the entire industry has to collaborate to move forward, whether that be I or something else. Recently, AMD, Intel Tinstrant, and many others have fired back at Nvidia and its CUDA ecosystem which has been the go-to standard for I use cases. The rest of the companies haven't seen the same level of traction as Nvidia due to its swift software stack releases and being on board the I bandwagon since its inception. For these companies, replicating the success that Nvidia has achieved with CUDA and its I software stack is going to be a huge effort. We are simply in the early days of the evolution of the I segment so we will see what happens in the next few years and if we manage to see a more viable alternative or replacement to Nvidia's behemoth. CUDA. Right now, people are trying to get products to market as fast as possible. This industry is changing at a pace that I have never seen before in terms of just how fast things are going and as a result, you are going to be as productive as possible. There are various ways to do that. Our approach, AMD's approach is to have an open source ecosystem. We are huge huge supporters of the open source. We believe that there's no one company that has the answer to everything, we actually have to collaborate. 
Next up, we had Weta FX's executive VFX producer, David Conley, at the SXSW stage joined by AMD CEO, Dr. Lisa Su. David mentioned how the world of VFX has rapidly progressed over the past few years and thanked AMD for its dedicated to high-performance computing which enabled the team at Weta FX to be awarded an Oscar for the animated short called War Is Over. We won an Oscar for an animated short called War Is Over, songs inspired by John Lennon and Yoko Lennon and we did it entirely on AMD using real-time technologies to animate something that has never been done before. 30 years ago, Peter Jackson started a company, one computer, eight people and did some work on it called Heavenly Creatures. Now we over 1800 people and hundreds and thousands of cores in computers and machines all over the world creating movies like Avatar 2 and you saw some sneak peek footage there of Kingdom of the Eight. These images are possible because there's a partnership with a company like AMD that gives us the leverage and the insights and they work with our teams and we work with their teams to optimize because a lot of this wouldn't be possible. We would be rendering Avatar today if it wasn't for a lot of partners. David Conley, Executive VFX Producer, Weta FX The animated short was made using AMD's technologies such as Risen Threadripper PRO CPUs and Radeon PRO GPUs which have become the standard for workstation users owing to their great performance capabilities and the ability to offer lots of cores with huge amounts of efficiency backing them up. We use every bit of AMD and I mean every bit. As soon as it comes off the assembly line we are at the door knocking, can we use it? Secondly, I do want to talk about I and I do want to talk about the future but I wanna acknowledge that the use of I in the entertainment industry is still a sensitive subject. A lot of people misunderstand it and don't really truly understand where I can help us as a community but I also want to make sure that artists understand that I is a tool and this is not about replacing artists. Where I see things and where I am hoping to go is that we as an industry have moved from GPUs to GPUs and there's an intrinsic relationship between the types of technologies that AMD is working on. I am believing that the future of filmmaking is a partnership between passive entertainment and active entertainment and this is where we are going to see the intersection of games. I know I heard a loud roar from all of you gamers out there so I wanna hear another one because gaming, visual effects and movie making is all the same and I wanna jump from video games to movies, I wanna go from active entertainment to passive entertainment, I wanna go into real time entertainment and that is where films are going in 3-5 years. We are not going to be able to dot that without the help of companies like AMD where we get real-time processing and real-time rendering and a lot of I is going to help us get to that place. There's no doubt that AMD is one of the major players in the I segment, they are the top 3 in the PC market and they have a strong roadmap for the IPC and I server segment planned out for the years ahead. The company will be giving an iFueled presentation at the opening keynote of Computex 2024 where we will get to hear more about their future endeavors.